September 1913 What need you, being come to sense, But fumble in a greasy till, And add the halfpence to the pence, And prayer to shivering prayer, Until you have dried the marrow from the bone? For men were born to pray and save, Romantic Ireland dead and gone, It's with O'Leary in the grave. If they were of a different kind, the names that stilled your childish play. They have gone about the world like wind, a little time had they to pray, for whom a hangman's rope was spun. And what, God help us, could they save? Romantic Ireland's dead and gone, it's with O'Leary in the grave. Was it for this the wild geese spread, the grey wing upon every tide? For this that all that blood was shed? For this Edward Fitzgerald died? And Robert Emmett, and Wolfe Tone, all that delirium of the brave. Romantic Ireland dead and gone, it's with O'Leary in the grave. Yet could we turn the years again, and call those exiles as they were, and all their loneliness and pain, you'd cry, some woman's yellow hair has maddened every mother's son. They weighed so lightly what they gave, but let them be, they're dead and gone. They're with O'Leary in the grave. The Magi Now, as at all times, I can see in the mind's eye, In their stiff, painted clothes, The pale, unsatisfied ones appear and disappear In the blue depth of the sky, With all their ancient faces like rain-beaten stones, And all their helms of silver hovering side by side, And all their eyes still fixed, hoping to find once more, being by Calvary's turbulence unsatisfied, the uncontrollable mystery on the bestial floor. The Wild Swans at Cool The trees are in their autumn beauty, the woodland paths are dry. Under the October twilight the water mirrors a still sky. Upon the brimming water among the stones are nine and fifty swans. The nineteenth autumn has come upon me since I first made my count. I saw, before I had well finished, all suddenly mount and scatter wheeling in great broken rings upon their clamorous wings. I have looked upon those brilliant creatures, and now my heart is sore. All's changed since I, hearing at twilight, the first time on the shore, the bellbeat of their wings above my head, trod with a lighted tread. Unwearied still, lover by lover, they paddle in the cold. Companionable streams will climb the air. Their hearts have not grown old. Passion or conquest, wander where they will, attend upon them still. But now they drift on the still water, mysterious, beautiful. Among what rushes will they build? By what lake's edge or pool delight men's eyes? When I awake some day to find they have flown away. The Second Coming Turning and turning in the widening gyre, The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world, The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, And everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand, surely the second coming is at hand, the second coming! Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spirit as moondy troubles my sight. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it reel shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle, and what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. 